Welcome, everybody, to episode 179 of The China Show. That's right, 179. That's a long way coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. As um, usual. I do want to say something. Oh, what's that? We're going to be teasing something really quick. Right now? Um, yes, but it's about the Asia Games, and I want everyone to understand what the Asia Games is first. Okay. And that is the Olympics that happens in Asia. Um, and there was something very, very funny that happened. Yeah. But so it's kind of like a, an Olympic Games that's very exclusionary to anyone who's not Asian? Yes. <laughs> no, it's just, you have to be in those Asian countries. Yeah, it's otherwise like you're just not allowed. So It'd be like the North America Olympics. It's like a segregated games. <laughs> I guess. It really oh, is. Get real heavy real quick. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's show this clip, and I want to see if you guys figure it out first. Okay, just take before, a... before, that's part of what's needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we've got a lot to talk about today, guys, and we're going to jump right into your little teaser, which uh, I think a lot of people saw in my video, so it's not really new. Oh, come on. Some people might not have. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. But uh, before we jump into that, uh, we're going to get started. We've got a fun one for you today, okay? It's a lot of laughs. By the way, mid-autumn day, so we got the moon cakes, if you're wondering we what do. those are. We'll talk about those in a minute. Exactly. Um, anyway, stick around because we're going to saunter right into it with what's new. And that's when we talk about, you know, what's happening in China, what's new. And uh, yeah, these Asia games, they're currently still running mm -hmm. and they're new. So let's, let's take it out. Of, take us out of it. You want to take us out of yeah. it? So okay. people can see the full effect. Okay. Yeah. <笑>我們的整個什麼 Yeah, so uh, for those of you curious as to what's going on here, um, the opening ceremony was this crazy big thing, okay? As usual, China likes to make a massive song and dance ever since the 2008 Olympics out of any of these kind of sporting events. Lots of fireworks, big show, big brouhaha. And if you were watching at home, I'll go back to this first clip over here. This is what you'd see. Take a look. Fireworks shooting out the top of the stadium. But there were none. Um, look at that. That's the typical. You always see that. That would like cause a, the city to burn down. Well, the if thing it was is, actually like during the 2008 Olympics, they, they also did a couple of fake fireworks, but they also did, they actually did do this. Yeah. yeah. Shooting fireworks off all the buildings yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And that's, you see that, that's what you're watching on TV are these amazing, spectacular fireworks going off the top of all the buildings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was fake. Yeah. Now, of course, when they got called out for it being fake, because a lot of people turned up to try and film this. Yes. And they were like, it's about to start. We're going to expect this massive opening and nothing happened. Oh. Okay. And people. Because it's meant to deceive. Yeah. It, it must be, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, now they come out with this. Oh, it's AI. They called it AI, AI. fireworks. Not only is it AI, but it's environmentally friendly. And that's right. why they did it. They use CG and AI because they want to be environmentally friendly. Nice. That obviously didn't work. <laughs> Cover up. Well, I mean, it obviously didn't work. So look at the sky. You know, yeah. it's, and that's, that's actually something I'd like to point out here. If you look at the, um, look at the, the footage on, on the, the person's iPad. I love the guy's commentary. Yeah, it's like, come, come, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Mayo. Mayo, there's nothing there. Mayo, there's nothing there. But also look at the sky, right? Mayo, mayo. Look at the sky in the footage that's on TV. It's like clear. a clear black sky, you know, like this is nighttime. No pollution. Meanwhile, reality. Look at the difference between the two. Um, that's something no one was actually bringing up, is look at the sheer amount of pollution. I mean, that's just, again, it shows you how uh, China is the land of shortcuts and facades. Yeah. It's all about putting this image forward that's actually not true, or at least a very doctored image. Yeah. Now, of course, you're not going to have a, like a CG man running across the water, but the fact of the matter is they showed a lot of what looked like real fireworks and a light show and everything that just didn't happen Yeah. for the Asian Games opening. Yep. Uh, and again, just deceit. 
This thing, though, this Asia Games is, of course, one of the biggest things that's happening at the moment in China. And there always is these. They made a huge thing out of the Beijing Olympics. Remember the the Winter Olympics? You're we right. covered that on the show. Mm. All the song and dance beforehand made it look spectacular, but no one was allowed to attend. Yeah. That kind of thing. We're going to get into it because they made a big song and dance about this thing as well. There's some funny propaganda we can't wait to show you. Um, you know, some real comedy. But before we get into the comedy, we've got to look at a bit of tragedy. Yeah. If um, you care about the environment, which you should because yeah. you live in this earth. Unless you are our alien friends. <laughs> sure. You know what Reddit like... keeps feeding me? Reddit keeps feeding me like UFO subreddits. And I have never once expressed interest in that ever in my the history of my life. It's probably those uh, like Mexican UFOs, like those aliens or whatever. Oh, yeah. I was kind of laughing at that. Yeah. It's yeah. probably what it is. Yeah. Anyway, so this is a horrible runoff. Can you explain the situation here? Yeah, it's this bad runoff that was uh, in, uh, what's it called? In Maoming? Yes, in Guangdong. In Guangdong. Uh, we've, we've been, been there, there yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of like right before you get to Hainan, which somebody loves that place, I believe. Hainan? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy. How sure? How how sure? On the pearl white beaches. Yeah, of pearl Hainan. white beaches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, there's a uh, sewage runoff that was uh, basically being re rerouted so that people didn't know. <laughs> so some people figured it out. Mm -hmm. And when this kind of stuff happens, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's actually really sad. People will figure this out, and they don't expect that it's illegal to post something about it, right? Of course, yeah, it's yeah. like, cause it's oh, this is a big problem. Look what I found. Yeah. Usually, this stuff gets scrubbed off the internet like pretty quickly, though. Sure. It's kind of ironic. Uh, because people think that, hey, if there's a problem in front of me, I, I should be able to share this with the rest of my countrymen. No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Because you're making your own country look bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, actually, in this particular example, the, the guys actually had someone on the phone. They yeah. called the factory and they yes. were admitting to it. And that's yeah. what makes this kind of special. Uh, you know? You see, turn black right yeah. Must uh, not be a pearl white beach anymore. No. No, so I mean, look, the thing is, when China, especially lately, has been jumping up and down about the Fukushima stuff, yeah. you have to look to China itself as absolutely the worst polluter in the world at the moment. Oh, yeah. Far none. Yeah. You know, just the sheer amount of pollution that's coming out of China, not just runoff into the sea. The CO2. But yeah, the CO2, the destruction. Groundwater, of... I covered in my videos, uh, 80 to 90% unusable now. Yeah. 80 to 90%. Yeah, yeah, completely. So they're always awful. like, CCP officials are always like, what about Flint, Michigan? And it's like, <laughs> yes. bro, what about 80 to 90% of your entire groundwater and you don't even allow people to privately test? Yeah. So go away. Exactly. Go jump in that lake. Yes, yeah, go jump in that lake. <laughs> jump in that <laughs> runoff. Yeah. Runoff lake. <laughs> anyway, um, we've said this for a long time, but the, the unfortunate thing is that as a foreigner in China, when it comes to books, there's not a lot of choice. Oh, it was almost none. Yeah. Almost I, re none. I remember in Shenzhen, I would go to Book City. They've got a place mm. called Book City. It's a huge building, and it sounds impressive because, you mm. know, what? it's it's a city of books. Not really. It's just a big building full of, you know, different bookshops and various other things. Not just bookshops, actually. Mainly it had training English and other language training centers in it. And stuff. Uh -huh. But it did have a lot of books and a lot of stationery and that kind of thing. But as an English-speaking person, to find actual English books in there is very difficult. Or any foreign language books. It's a very limited selection. And, of course, it's only censored and banned. Like, the, yeah, know, the irony stuff that's is not that they, they have foreign language sections, right? Yes. So I went to – I was in a – Pretty major city, right? Went to this yeah. bookstore and they had like a foreign language section, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'll maybe I'll pick up some books. Because like there's only so much you can do by sitting down and, and reading like very intense novels in Chinese or something. You want to you read something in your native language once in a while, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So you go there and it was just those very cheap like uh, homework manuals to like practice your English. That's what yeah. their foreign language, you know, section yeah. meant was like... Test materials for Chinese people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite depressing because, you know, like, yeah, mm, sense honestly, sense. yeah, if you are somebody who likes to read books, it's hard to find them. Anyway, this particular foreign languages bookstore is... Yeah, I did want to say one thing. Even yeah. if you do read Chinese, like you said, it's going to be hard for you to find anything interesting to read because mm -hmm. it's so books are heavily, heavily censored, yes. even more so than other stuff. Yeah, in China. Yeah. It's it's pretty bad. It's limited. Yeah, I know this for a fact because uh just I wanted to release release like a little magazine 
when I was working yeah. at the rapist school. Oh, don't even bother. So I wanted to release like, I don't know, a bi-weekly or one, once a month, kind of like for the school. And it would have like some language training stuff in it. Bi-weekly, some, that's pretty yeah, open-minded week. You know, yeah, 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 it is. Anyway, it'd be kind of a fun thing where people could read something interesting, mm-hmm. learn a little something. Mm-hmm. And I, I ran it by the boss because, you know, we could put it together quite easily. And he was like, don't bother because it would have to be sent into the censorship yep. board yep. and it takes forever to get approved. It's very costly. It's such a pain in the ass. He's like, yep. don't, don't do it. Yep. Anyway, Foreign Languages Bookstore over here has got a fantastic selection of foreign language books. Thought we'd show it to you all. <laughs> <laughs> this is not edited, by the way. No. And I actually zoomed it in yeah. so you could get an idea. Oh, you got another zoom? Because it's, it's true. I mean, they didn't lie. It is yeah. not false advertising. These are foreign language books. Yes. Uh, they are... Xi Jinping's it's like a, there's in book. Arabic and in like German yes. and in it's Xi Jinping, English. It's the governance of China by Xi Jinping, part one, two, and three in many languages. Yeah, so, so this is, is the foreign, foreign language yeah. foreign language section over here. Yeah, we were joking about this, and I was saying, you know, if I was trapped in this hell where the only book I could ever read is this disgusting book, uh-huh. I would start to just take the words and rearrange them and write my own story. You know what I mean? Interesting. I'd make like an adventure story out of Xi Jinping's governance. That would be a, considered a piece of art, I believe. Yeah, you know where you have to, you, you're limited to only the, the words in that book. Interesting. But imagine, you're like, you'd feel like you're trapped on a desert island or something yeah. if this is the only thing you can read, right? Do you think if you only read this on a desert, let's say you had a, a year, Yeah. right? Of course, if you're trapped on a desert island for a year, you're going to end up reading this book if that's the only one you have. Yeah. Do you think you would succumb to the propaganda or not? Absolutely not. Do no. you think I should have I should have phrased this better? Of course yeah. we wouldn't. No. Um, because we understand China and I have actually read some of this. Um, Braver than me to read that crap. Yeah, it was a given as a gift. I remember some, that in your house. Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine who gave that yeah, to you. Yeah, I know who gave that up, to you. But, mm-hmm. um, someone that didn't have malintent. Just no. Thought that I might understand China better. Mm-hmm. That's that's irony. Yes. I think you understand China worse if you read this book. Yes, if you read this book, yeah. Anyway, The Governance of Xi Jinping, part one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Do you think the average person, human being, normal person that doesn't know much, do you think they would succumb to the propaganda? I think they would just fall asleep, to be honest. Yeah, this is very boring. You wouldn't need Ambien. No. no. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do think if you were limited and it was like a project and you could only use the words in there and mix it around. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That's what I'd do if I was stuck with that crap. Anyway, uh, let's move on from that. What else are we going to watch new? Oh, of course. This is a... uh... From somebody sent me this from the Discord, which I loved. I wonder if we still have that soundbite. I would like to find it. Um, maybe not. I'll have to bring it back. But do you know we have the? Uh, is this actually going to be it? Oh, no. Yeah, it's um, while you explain what this is, let I do me want see. to apologize. I can't. We can't be in the Discord all the time. I try to. So sometimes people send me screenshots from within the Discord, and I, I get to the good. I get to the best ofs. Mm-hmm. Right. You get to the best ofs. And this was a best of IMO. Um, so shout out to Dragonella who drew this. This is, uh, I believe, the idea came from uh, Doc Slothington, though. Okay. Um, says, they can't uh, see it right now because I'm busy messing around. Um, but uh, I'll show it up for you in a second. I'm just trying to find the, sure. the clip. I'll, I'll just say, uh, oh, they can't see it right no, they can't now. So see what it, am I so. even talking about? You're talking about something. Well, I don't even want to talk about it now. Oh, why not? We made mooncakes, by the way. Oh, that's what you can talk about, day. yeah. Um, we made two different kinds. By the way, some mooncakes are full of like nuts and egg yolks and stuff like this. We made the other kind of more modern version, mm-hmm. which is full of like, you know, you got your bean paste and you got your sweet stuff. And right. we even have one made out of cream cheese. there it is so now we have the uh i'll get it back to this but guys what this stems from is this ridiculous uh apologist who is trying his best to stay in china and he really his visa was coming up so absolutely it was um and he was trying to like i don't know somehow get the chinese government to like have mercy and give him a visa so he went on this ridiculous rant okay Mm. on a beach Trying to praise China in every single it's way. It's amazing. It's the funniest it's like thing. Like the we, best shield yeah, attempt it's ever. A, it's, and we did a whole thing about it. But anyway, part of it, he was trying to say. He also tried to get it removed. Yeah, he was uh, which trying. Doesn't to, work. No, it's he tr- he tried on to YouTube, say. YouTube, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm. I think he was trying to say, I'm in China. I think he was trying to say, I'm in China. But he says, "What's I Zhongguo?" It should yeah. sound like this. "What's I Zhongguo?" Yeah, but he said, "What's I Zhongguo?" Does that sound like "What's I Zhongguo?" No. 
Sounds like Woshie Tongwu, which means I shoe pets. And yes. so it's become kind of a meme around here. Yeah. And this is a fantastic representation of that. Um, and, Amazing. Uh, right? It's awesome. Yeah. Might, might make a merch out of that sometime because that's such that's a good That's so design. good because people would understand it if they were part of the show. Woshie Tongwu. I yeah. just love it. It's a great font. Mm -hmm. I love the, uh, the, all the animals on it. Yeah. It's really good stuff. Okay. As you guys saw this amazing sneak preview behind us, okay, this is a sneak preview. Um, it's ad time. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing sneak preview. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're you're absolutely correct. Okay. So mm -hmm. I first got interested in uh, AG1 by Athletic Greens because I'm the kind of person that doesn't want to have to remember what I should eat throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I really think that you benefit from, from this oh, as well. Time. So today's video is brought to you by AG1 from Athletic Greens. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic, pretty much the easiest thing you can do in the shortest amount of time for your body. Uh, you, you, you've been drinking it every day, right? Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. It's become a routine because, you know, um, I, my wife was like, hey, take these vitamins and yeah, whatever. Yeah, she's always buying like, you the supplements. And, and it's stuff. like, there's a whole lot of these things. I'm like, come on. Like, and You're it's not a that hassle. kind of person. No, and I don't like swallowing, I'm not even. I don't like swallowing those pills, man. Yeah. You know? It's a tough pill to swallow. You gotta like get them all in your mouth and you're like, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's not yeah, cool. Someone's gonna take yeah, that out of the yeah, context. Of course they will, but anyway, so. <laughs> Rather just have a little drink. Yes, and it is a delicious drink. And it tastes drink. nice. You yeah. get you, you really, really start to enjoy it, actually. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Well, I take a bunch of things, and you can just mix one scoop of powder in water once mm -hmm. a day. AG1 was designed with that ease in mind so you can live a healthier and better life without having to do a whole lot, right? Mm. Um, it's just one scoop of water mixed in once a day, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Uh, and it's been part of millions of mornings. Did you say one scoop of water mixed in? One scoop with water. Oh, one scoop with water. Yes. I was going to say, if you just well, put you a scoop of water. Me over here. No, I'm just like a scoop of water would be a little too little. Yeah, you wouldn't have to buy anything. <laughs> you would be like choking up powder. You also wouldn't He's... have to buy anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just one true. scoop of water. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, true. Yeah, AG1 yeah. gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. If mm -hmm. you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply mm -hmm. of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go right. to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Check it out. Had a couple people just reach out even today saying that they're really happy with it. It's good stuff. Yes. Yeah, we I take it. You guys can recommend it. should have it too. Yeah. Anyway, Moving guys, on. thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much to Athletic Greens for sponsoring us. Now it's time for us to continue on with the show. We're going to move on to Soft Power Hour, are we? Yes, we are. No, 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 no. We have what? plenty of what's still, new. Still what's new? Yes. Oh, no. Stop the press. Yeah. It's a, Oh, yes. Stop. Pr continue you know, the wow, press. Wow, so good. <laughs> this pressing <laughs> matter. Rick! <laughs> Rick's not selling anything. Get him yeah, out okay. of there. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, we have something I have yes. just died. Oh, it's amazing. At. Yes. Now, guys, you know, we were talking about this ridiculous propaganda. Let me get this. This is field old out school, of the, way. the China show. You guys are going to mm -hmm. love it if yeah. you're old fans. So, because but of the Asian video. games, you yeah. know, the Asian games, the segregated games that had that fake opening. Stop with the segregated games. It is. It's like for Asians only. It's apparently. not. You can you can participate if you are in Asia. Okay. Yeah. All right. So and a anywhere... lot of countries, by the way, it's not East Asia. It's like yeah. Turkey and stuff. It doesn't matter. It's still like so. If you're not in Asia, you're if not you went to? to go there, you could be in it. If you're like in Europe, you can't. No, because it's an area. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. guess what? I also think it's wicked lame because it always has to do with China and they build these ridiculous stadiums and make this big hoo-ha mm. of something that doesn't have that much of your ship. Yeah, exactly. It's just for propaganda. Well, I mean, they did the same at the University in Shenzhen when I was there. Yep. Anyway, so here we have the Asia Games and this is Show Me China, which is Global Link, which is, uh, again, Chinese state propaganda. Xinhua, yeah. Sorry. Can, you, can you show uh, mm -hmm. who usually appears on there? Wow, so good. Oh, he likes it. And that's his show. That's Show Me China. Show Me China actually is where Rick, you know, old uh, big we part of Rick. the show. Everybody loves him. He's great. I'm sure I've got more of him around here. Give me a second. Oh, I'm... Dragonella, we'll, we will show the... Oh, yes, pictures. I'd we'll love to try this. Segment coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as we all know, good old Rick, um, he's a big part of uh, this. It is his show, as you say. But he's not in this one. It's depressing. Uh, we're a little worried that he's getting a little bit long in the tooth. Mm -hmm. uh, he might end up retiring soon, and I'll miss him because he's one of my favorite state media personalities. I wouldn't yeah. even call him a shill, actually. Yeah, he's a shill. Yeah, but uh, but he's, very, like, he's like, like a mild shill. He did jump out of an airplane and eat a mooncake. Yeah, so which is he's pretty awesome. He's got a little bit of respect yeah. for the guy. Anyway, 
So we all remember Miranda probably from this and uh, we'll see her again. Mm -hmm. Let's get right into it because this is the lead up. This was just before the the Asia Games as usual. Yes. They have to have a big propaganda push to yes. make everyone care about it somehow. And, and they're running out of shills. <laughs> they are running out of shills. <laughs> Wait till you see yeah. the new shill. Let's take a look. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Miranda. Hi, Kong. Nice to be here. What interests you the most in the Hangzhou Asian Games? This is supposed to be a smart game. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. This goes really quick, right? Yeah. So this is not, they haven't introduced the shill yet, but they have the guy, it's supposed to be his meta thing, where yeah. there's a guy walking around with a gimbal filming the guy filming her. Yeah. And they're dubbing over everything because they've obviously made too many mistakes. They, mis they make mistakes. And the problem is Ch China state, Chinese state media still hasn't figured out audio yet. Yeah. They do such a bad job and they obviously make lots of mistakes or the microphone wasn't turned on or something. Yes. So they always have to add the voices in afterwards. That's why when you see the mouths moving and it's different, uh, you know why. Hello, Miranda. Hi, Kong. Nice to be here. What interests you the most in the Hangzhou Asian Games? This is supposed to be a smart game. Hmm? What's going on there? <laughs> this is cool. Wait, I know him. It's Dan. Hey, Miranda. What the hell? Yes. Nice to meet Bro, you. Bro, hold on. Yeah. I, and I'm not going to pour any buzzes too much. Yeah, but yeah. You have to understand that they've run out of shills. Yeah. And they are finding like random. It doesn't matter where they're from. I think this yeah. guy's Eastern European or yeah, Russian. Yeah, could, could be Belarus Russian. Or something. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, my point is, is that mm -hmm. they're running out of native English speakers, which they really want to use because yes. they're trying to appeal or show off to the West or English speaking yes, yeah. people. And they've run out of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, this could fall in, in line with the whole Asia Games thing. Yeah. But they found this guy who straight up looks like Russian Justin Timberlake from 1998. Yeah. And he's wearing the clothes and the sunglasses. He is a time capsule. Yeah, he's quite the character, as you're yeah. going to find out. Den. Yeah, Den. All right, let's see, let's see what Den's all about over here. What are you doing here? I really need your help. You know, a uh, break and set to make official Asian game. They beat in Hanzhou. I feel invited to break dance. Good for you. Wait, what did <laughs> what he even just say? Said? <laughs> said I said I'm you breaking need to get dance. Get us out of there sometimes so yeah. people can follow okay. the subtitles. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll get us out just for a minute, just so that you can get what he said to her. Okay, let's see, because you'll see the subtitles. All right, let's try this out. Here. I really need your help. You know, a uh, break and set to make official Asian game. They beat in Hangzhou. Mm -hmm. I feel invited to break dance. Good for you. But I have to finish choreography full of digital technology vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what my favorite yeah. part about well, that is? It makes is that, no sense. It, number one, it makes no sense. But number two, he yeah. he starts to say something. It's obviously wrong, so they yeah. dub it over. You got to watch his mouth. But yeah. even the dub is wrong, so they had to splice multiple clips together yeah. from the dub. Yes. Which just, I love. Just to try and make it. But anyway... So what I'm getting is he's supposed to be doing some kind of break dancing thing for the Asian Games, right? Yeah, I guess that's the plot. I want to see that last part. Again. Just, just the last the part. Full okay. of digital technology. Yeah, okay, we can watch his it. mouth. Okay, okay, I'm just from here. Okay, all right. Oh, mm -hmm. I feel invited to break dance. Good for you. But I have to finish choreography full of digital technology vibes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they okay. took pieces. They obviously didn't yeah. get him in for another recording. They took like. They found him say technology in a different part. Yeah, cut that put it, put it part in. out and put it in there. Anyway, so uh, he says, I got stuck. I get a stuck. I happen to have a chance to explore the advanced technology mm. applied in the Asian games. If you come with us, you may be inspired. Wow, so interesting. We wow, that reminds me of something. Yeah, it certainly does. Wow, so good. <laughs> wow, so interesting. Wow, so good. All right, so let's follow. They're going on this amazing adventure because now, now I get it, right? Yes. She, Miranda, whose English is better than his Way by a better. long shot, by the way, she is going to show him some of the technological advancements that Saturation Gate over here, apparently, Hangzhou. Yeah. It's all Look saturated to the nines. Yeah. They, they're they going to show like some digital things to give him an idea to put into his breakdance, right? Okay. So because he's got to have his breakdance full of full technological vibes. You know what I mean? What? When he says full of technology and vibes, you know what yeah. is actually going to happen? What? He's going to, and this is just a prediction. Prediction. He's going to find, or the Chinese government's going to find a way to incorporate AI, robotics, and 5G into every yep. single thing. Probably. And remember, guys, this is from like a month ago, maybe. This yes. is very recent. Oh, yeah. No, this is not. It's this not is even a month. Very, very. Yeah, it's like no, a this is a couple of days ago. Yeah. This well, is just very before, soon. Just before the launch of the. Bro, this is like. When is it just from? now? I'm not okay. even joking. 
Well, it's got to have been just before the actual like opening of the games, because this is leading no, up to it. No, because they've been going on for it for a while. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's not even... Uh... You'll find it. No, I, w- I will, for sure. Yeah. Um, you got to do Show Me China, bro. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that I'll do I'll just want to look while we're at it, just okay. to show you how recent this is. Well, you got to pay attention because it's going to yes, ramp yes, up yeah, now. Okay, sure, let's sure. see Let's see what he does. Okay. Go to several Asian games-related venues, and oh, at wow. each, if we can unlock at least yeah, one smart technology gear, we will get a digital ticket. In the end, we need to check at least the five different technologies. The so more yeah. the merrier. Wow, digital ticket? Mm-hmm. Excellent. What are we waiting for? Just follow me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> never mind this stuff. They always show those like robot toys. Yeah. From like the nineties or something. Yeah. It's as if it's something advanced. Because they don't do anything. Yeah. It's just we they have don't to make anything. We have to show that this is technological. What do we have? Let's put some toy robots there to yes. make it look like it's fancy. And the rest of the world will say, Wow, China. Dustin said, Wow, digital ticket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a digital wow, ticket. Wow, so good. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> well, you know how many times they've said that? Yeah. We've been using digital tickets for like twenty years. Yeah, but I think in this in this uh, thing it's kind of like getting a uh, an award, oh, like wow. a digital award. Mm. You know, like when you play Xbox or something, and a bloop, you yeah, know, you've just yeah, yeah, yeah. killed a hundred enemies with a headshot, and it's right. like, wow, headmaster. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. that's a torch of the Hangzhou Asian Games. Wow, so cool. There must <laughs> be a lot of shit. innovative technologies <laughs> yeah. in it. I'm this sorry, but that looks like lighter a pink than dill. I thought. We never mind. Let's take a picture. Yeah. yeah. I always want to be a touch bear. <laughs> Wait, I always want to be a touch bear. Yeah, this dude. I wants... want to be a touch bear too. Yeah, touch bearer. Yeah, yeah touch bear. Is it? Did, no, I think he said touch bearer. Okay. Let's hear. Yeah, we'll it's go one more time with that. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. This torch much lighter than I thought. Let's take a picture. Yeah. I always want to be a touch bearer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, that's hey. a dream come true. Really? Oh, oh, oh wait, oh, hang on. Dude. Innovation. Okay, she's going to make his dream come true. Take a look. She's like, hey, guys, out of nowhere comes this random girl. Hey. A dream me come true. Really? <laughs> yeah, the digital torchbearer. Oh. Okay, let's try it. I love it. the CCB well, board meeting up. where people and thought this was going to be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him, he's having so much fun. Oh, look at it, look how amazing that looks. That Why looks... did they say 2022? This is the it's new... It's 2023, yeah. Yeah, they messed... <laughs> they made a mistake. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, that looks awful to me. That looks like vomit. Yeah, it's just like, it's really old, and they keep recycling this metaverse type stuff they keep using, remember? Yeah, this is a clown vomit Oh, it is the metaverse. Oh, metaverse. Yeah. oh my gosh, guys, it's dead. Give it I, up. I was even just joking about the metaverse, yeah. thing, but it is metaverse stuff. Wow. The metaverse of the Hangzhou Asian Games, okay. Okay. <laughs> Dan, you can win a ticket if you relay the torch twice more. I got it! Wow, got it. congratulations! You got your first digital ticket! Let's go to the next stop! Easy peasy, let's yeah. go! Easy peasy, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> this guy. I didn't see <laughs> anything particularly intelligent around here. Oh, 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 oh. Snap! Woo. Oh, snap. Dan with the bird. Uh, Let's per, do that again. Poor freaking Miranda. I know. He comes, they're going, walking in together into the stadium. I didn't it's see like... anything particularly intelligent around here. Uh, he's including himself, obviously. <laughs> oh, Dan. <laughs> Look at him uh, sweating through his shirt. Yeah, well, I mean, I would too. Me too. Actually, Me too. it's See. right under your feet. The turf oh. of this football field is a combination of natural and artificial grass. Don't so call it's Miranda more durable and resistant yeah, to tear and wear. It's supposed to be tear the world's wear. best turf system. You can have a try. Okay. You can have a try. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. I, uh, why, why is he naked? I don't know why he's suddenly putting on a different shirt. Maybe he sweat. Hot? Maybe he sweat too much uh, through the other okay. one. But I like the tear and wear. You yes, know. Yes. So apparently this is uh, 
in, intelligent, smart mixture of artificial and real turf. Mm. I wonder if that's not been done before. What does that even mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> try to explain that. Maybe just like astroturf, but then they plant real grass in between. That it. doesn't even make sense. It's definitely going to be something like that, like that's, a blend. Yeah, like a special blend. A special blend of turf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, apparently that's <laughs> people are loving. It. Yeah, well, it is. It's amazing. Get us wow. out of there. Yeah. Oh, very true. solid. <laughs> what is yeah. that like a positive <laughs> attribute? Oh, it's very solid. I don't know about if you, you fall, but it'll hurt. Yeah, it, like that's never occurred to me that it's a problem. I I don't watch sports, sure, but do you do. often see like soccer or, or football people running around and the turf's just like slipping away and like mud is appearing and stuff? Does that happen? Absolutely not. So I I mean again, remember they did that with the ice for the Beijing Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Like this is. This ice is better than normal ice. Yeah, they have to. They have. I've, we have physically changed the properties of basic elements. Yeah. <clears throat> because we are China. Yeah. Exactly. And we can do such things. I guess they're really just reaching. They need to have like these intelligent, smart things, and they're like, "This because is because it's government budget." Yeah. You yeah. guys probably need to understand, and because we don't want to interrupt too many times. But yeah. when they keep saying this AI, five G, metaverse, they're using. They're, they can write it into the budget and be like, "Central government, we need ten million dollars." Yeah. Because we're going to talk about AI and five G. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah. The, in mm. this uh, this stadium, even though it hasn't been. Yeah. The government is a bunch of 60, 70 year old CCP officials that have no idea yeah. what's going on. And they go, oh, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, exactly. And they get bribed. The end. Yeah. And then people get a lot of money and then they go and buy it from Germany or something. And they go pay 10, then 10 <laughs> RMB an hour to go do this. Anyway, let's take a look. Russian guy to break dance. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what's going on. Actually, it's not just the law, the entire venue is controlled by a smart brain. Smart it can brain. automatically adjust the Look at this dude. nonsense. That is, they do this a lot. Remember they did that big data thing? Yes. It's just they like to put out some random map up there. So this is supposed to be a smart brain for the stadium. Then why does it have flight paths across China? <laughs> what does it have to do with the it's stadium? It's a big map of China. It's just a fake ass nonsense to like, oh, we got graphs. You know, yeah. some programmer was told, make this stuff move around. Yeah. Make that, it switch. Temperature yeah. and the lighting in the venue according to the crowd density and the natural light. So the environment can reach the best state for human body. Save 20% of the electricity bill. Where's that? Where's that? Uh -oh. Where's that? Sorry guys! Look what I found! Uh, okay. It's amazing track. Look at you. I, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I kind of love that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, funny. It's amazing track. Look, Look the, the view. view. Exactly. <laughs> Look, and he can't wait to try it, guys. Okay. He wants to try the amazing. He is such a time capsule, though. Do you yeah. not think he, t he doesn't he take you back to a land party in 97? He's definitely from the 90s. Yeah. yeah. And he has like Eurobeats tracks, you know. Well, I listening. just feel like a lot of that region is kind of. They kind of stopped yeah, there. Maybe. They yeah. stopped to take it's a great. look at the view. Yeah, exactly. Yes, this is the sky track. The sky and the visitors track. can run and enjoy the panorama view of wow. Hangzhou. And it is also a smart track. Wow, so interesting. Let's go. Let's scan <laughs> our faces here. What? So it's. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> it's a smart track. All right, let's go. Let's scan our faces here. So it can mm. you can be deeply embedded and lose your privacy yeah, forever. Yeah, so they can like keep track, track. of exactly <laughs> what you're doing. So they can. It's a smart track that tracks, tracks you. you. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? Wow! Take a look at the view. Yeah, it's like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. I want to hear the what part. Okay, I'm pretty sure that like visitors coming there are not going to just randomly run around a track though. No, it's probably I, not I allowed. Yeah, let's see. Said it was for visitors. Okay. Visitors can run. All right, let's see. What's going on? Visitors can run and enjoy the panorama view of Hangzhou. Wow. And it is also a smart track. Wow, so interesting. Let's go. Let's scan our faces here. What this technology for? <laughs> well, this is a smart system. If you scan your face here, it will track your uh, fitness data when you run. Like uh, BPM and your uh, physical performance and the running speed, everything. Wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of something. Can we see actually the Wow, here? so good. <laughs> He's framed dead. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Let's go sorry. back it to will it. track your uh, fitness data when you run, like uh, BPM and your uh, physical performance. And then send and it to the government. Speed, everything. Wow. Cool. Yeah. It is the government. Can we see actually the run in here? Well, I'm not sure how it really works. Let's have a try. <laughs> Count me in. 
<laughs> this poor <laughs> guy. You know, I forgot. Oh, I actually completely forgot about that guy. He was in yeah. the beginning. Remember, like, hey, Miranda. He wants to be part of it. Yeah, like he's oh, feeling so left out. And this is unfair because, you know, this lame foreigner comes on the scene and all of a sudden the Chinese guy gets completely sidelined. Yeah, it's you not know what? fair. He should fall out to be fair. He should be freaking way faster. Look at him trailing back here like a snail. Yeah, true. Okay, <laughs> let's see what's going on. Look at him run. Oh, that's me. <laughs> they made him lose on purple. Yeah. Oh, good. Wow, you're good number job. one. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Good job. Excellent. What is wait? What is this unlock technology? Yes, unlock technology. Advanced anchoring lawn system. Mm, smart, smart brain. brain. Sky track. Okay. So he's getting all his tickets, right? His digital tickets. Wow. Well, look the view. Now. Yes, his yeah. smart brain. That's yeah. This is some technologies right here, guys. Did you know <clears throat> that the grass is a smart technology, and that having a a very basic computer controlled climate system is advanced technology, and a sky track, which is just a running track. Is smart technology? Well, Den knows. Den, Den knows all. Mm. Let's continue. What's next? This is the main operation center of the Hangzhou Asian Games. The core operation system, Asian Games on Cloud, is here. Oh, they had to throw cloud mm. in What makes there? it so different? We have many engineers here. Let's go and find out the answer. Let's go. Den 老师, 你好. 哎, 哎, 你好, 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 Oh, so it is Global yeah. link. Yeah, the yeah. liars. That's what they do. Actually, you can learn yeah. something here. They'll try. They don't want you to know it's state media. Because Xinhua is like the biggest it's state like media. The it's the top. Okay, so that's the Chinese government's mouthpiece. mouthpiece. It's that's like what they do. What they want you to think is what they're saying. Well, through this Xinhua. is just pure propaganda. Yes. What you're watching yes. here is propaganda to make you, the rest of the world, somehow think that the Asia Games is super high-tech and yes. super amazing. Yes. Okay, that's why they do it in English. Yeah. That's what it's for. It's for you. Yeah. But they don't want you to know it's coming straight from the Chinese Xinhua state agency. So, so they, they call it Global yeah. Link. They, they make it different. Global Link. And yeah. you're like, oh, what's Global Link? Some kind of like international oh, news? Some little uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, something like that maybe. Yeah, yeah anyway. So uh, she's asking this <clears throat> engineer over here. All about uh, why? What's unique about the Asia Games on Cloud? It's the first Smart Asian Games. Hmm. It's only for Smart Asians. <laughs> That's it's true though. Take a look. It's the Smart Asian Games. They they obviously have the dumb Asian Games later. <laughs> Just say do not that. make a special Olympics. I won't. Here. I won't. Let's carry on. So it's their fault for being segregated. Okay. <laughs> Stop with this cloud. Look at they have to blur it out so you can't Yeah, see they blur it out because it's fake and <laughs> rubbish. It's not related. I gotta tell you, like, how oh, is shoot. having cloud based shit going to help an athlete run faster? They have to come up with ways to pilfer funds from yeah, the exactly. social government. All of this nonsense yeah. is useless. It's all fake. And it's, I, it, part yeah. of it makes me happy because they waste so much on the, uh, the corruption of it all mm -hmm. that it can't go into bolstering the state yeah exactly true <laughs> to waste it on these dump yeah these dump projects that you they literally rot remember the stadium that they yeah. spent like a billion dollars on in no way, one uses Joe, it one? anymore yeah yeah they have like little music studios in the bottom that they can't even get customers for same with shenzhen they for the university aid mm. which is the university olympic games type thing yeah. they built multiple stadiums yeah. huge athletes villages and stuff i was there during the whole thing and i was helping train the doctors for that specific event you know and so I went to visit all of these locations because we had to test the little clinics and they had spent so much money on the equipment and the hospitals and the clinics. And it's just rotted. Yeah. They didn't use it afterwards. Yeah. They just kind of did it for this big hoo-ha show and tell yeah. thing and done. Anyway, yeah. let's carry on with this fake stuff. I like the fact that they had to blur it out. It's so funny. Yeah. Focus the camera properly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I mean, like, what the, what is the point of all this, right? What's up with this 2022 shit? Wow, they made a mistake. Yeah, and they made a mistake. Yeah, 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 they the people will be able to watch it online is basically what he's saying, which is everything. Yeah. You can gain access to any, you're, you're anything. Explaining away nonsense. Yeah. It doesn't just, matter. 
It's just like the operation, she says the operation system is impressive, right? It's not impressive. No, it's the normal way to do things. There's, yeah, it's, there's nothing new here is what we're trying <laughs> no. to say. They're trying to make it out as if this cloud computing and yeah. they've mixed it all together. And what he showed on his phone was like, people that are looking for restaurants will now be able to look for restaurants on this app now. Nice. That is awesome. what happened before any of this nonsense. It's it's kind of depressing when you understand how all this works and just how much of a waste of money it all is. Absolutely. I had never thought this technology can handle so much information. What are you talking about? Well, he's reading the script. Yeah, I get he it. He doesn't even know what yeah. he's saying. No, but... he doesn't. But technology... He only knows breaking. You know, you know, you know what IT stands for? Yeah, information technology. Information technology. Yeah. So yes, the technology can handle this much information. <laughs> in fact, it's meant to handle information. There's so many bits and bytes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> anyway, let's just carry on. It's Stop what, calling yeah. him Z-Milk. I get <laughs> okay. it, all right? I well, get it. Yeah. 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 Ten of thousand audience at the same time. Amazing. <laughs> Look at that nonsense, it's man. Well, you got a Garbage. This Plus. is such a... <laughs> That <laughs> whole place this is so dumb. I, I mean, used games on cloud, the unlocked. I also, <laughs> yeah, pass. He said pass, as in, you know, like, I like, like, like if you burst a zip. Yeah. Look at what everyone's looking at on their screen, though. It's like pretty much they're looking at a wallpaper, a wallpaper. or a screensaver oh, you know or something. what that is? What? It's just like when they go do those tours in Pyongyang and they're like, look, we have computers too. Mm -hmm. Our citizens can come to the public library. And it's always like, they're like home screen and they're like clicking nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this. They've tried to set this up as if it's like NASA command center for a mm. shuttle launch. Okay. Yeah. They've got rows of computers and a big screen up there showing like random nonsense data. It is nonsense, by no, the way. Because they had to get $10 million yeah. for a smart turf, I, which I, I isn't it. smart. No, it's and so not. They have to pretend like they're controlling grass. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, exactly. But I mean, we know it's all fake because guess what? This is this is all filmed before the games even began. So there's yeah. no data to be there. No. There's no audience there. No. There's nothing. So all this nonsense that you're seeing running in the background is just fake. And that's how it's going to be during the games too. Look at this stupid map of like, whoa. Z-Milk, do you think Z-Milk's actually impressed? No. No. I feel like he's just I, pretending to he's be. Just, I feel like he has no idea what's going uh, on. And look, maybe he is. Maybe he's just a sports guy and he doesn't yeah, yeah. understand computers. That's and he sees, thought, yeah. sees the flashing lights. It's interesting how they've blurred that one segment, yeah, isn't it's it? It's very important that nobody sees that that says dishwasher sales are yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it has a different city on it. Yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> it's whatever. Very Why would they blur that one that. segment? There's something Guys, going on. Guys, do not yeah. enhance that. Whatever yeah. you do, yep. do not go find this raw footage. Yeah, I Don't think do the it. only like useful information that's on this entire board is the temperature, which isn't even real. It's just <laughs> Randomized. Oh, by the way, a little yeah. tidbit for you. China yeah. actually controls the temperature and won't allow cities to post the real temperature if it gets too hot. Yeah, it's, it's actually true. Because they don't want people to have to stay home from work. Yeah, because there's a rule. <laughs> yeah. There's a law that if it's over they a lie. certain temperature, you can't go to work. Yeah, that's happened before. Yep. Amazing. Wow, you got a digital ticket. Bus. <laughs> <laughs> they said bus. Yes, they said bus. Just a little bit. This year's Asian game introduced esports for the first time, and this oh, is the venue. Like, wow. Yeah, does he? Weird. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care, dude. Oh, no, can he go back? What? What do you want to see? I just want to look at him for a second, like his okay. look when he's there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Does he not? We were talking about this earlier. Does he not remind you of the guy that would? He doesn't have a good, a good command of the English language, so he would, in inopportune times, always find a chance to swear. Yes, absolutely. Like, <laughs> and apologies for the swears, but he'd be like, yeah. wow, this is so fucking good. Yeah, it's okay. It's like, what the fuck is this? You know he's going to say that. Wow, this yeah. is... Yeah. What well, shit? <laughs> you know, like, you know that's him. Oh, this is shit so shit good. <laughs> yeah, shit good. <laughs> anyway, let's continue before we... Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't yeah. wait to go. The what? fuck place. <laughs> He just seems wow. to come off with that. Yeah. Yeah. He does. Yeah. This is the first time that like he means well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. He's a nice games. guy. Yeah. It has attracted a lot of attention. A ticket for the most important game should cost 1,000 yuan, <laughs> which is the most expensive ticket for the Asian game. Oh. Hmm? Oh, where'd Where he go Dan? now? Where's Dan? Hmm? He's borrowed something from our 5G walkie talkies. Oh, here we go. A 5G walkie talkie. Yes. He has a 5G what with a video on it. So it's a phone. 
It's just literally like, yeah, what is this? A 5G walkie-talkie? Can we just stop? Can we stop the 5G nonsense, yeah. guys? Yeah, what is this like, you know? <laughs> You're obsessed with tricking the world about I know. That. Fi- look, a 5G walkie-talkie, I'm drawing a line here, okay? Yes, yes. It is literally like, why do you need that? If you could yes. just use your phone with Skype or anything, WeChat, WhatsApp, you can make a... Messenger, you can make a video call. Yeah. Why do you need a 5G walkie-talkie? Because you got a billion dollars to do it and say, look, we developed a new technology. The world will be impressed. It's not a new technology. No, it's freaking it old. Not. Anyway, so he's got a 5G walkie-talkie. What's he going to do with okay. it? Wow, but the and that quality of that camera is horrible, well, by the way. Because how are they going to make something with the biggest profit margin so they get cigarettes and buy Joe? Yeah. You know, you, you need like... Not 5G technology to s- transmit such a bad signal. It can work Dude, on like 2G or you 3G. You show up. You show up and mm-hmm. got this mandate, right? Picture yeah. your China Mobile or whatever company, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And this 75-year-old CCP pot belly official that yeah. loves cognac and he loves Zhonghua cigarettes, expensive taste in cigarettes. Yeah. He goes, listen, we got to make something 5G. Mm-hmm. You go, I'll be right back. You make like a 10 RMB phone or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go to like some tech hub and you're like, what is the cheapest screen possible? Yep. We got to shit something out. Mm-hmm. You come back and he goes, this is incredible. Walkie talkies from my memory are just voice. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's just it a Looks like it's Laura and G, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look. <laughs> they effed up the yeah. audio. Yeah, you know, like, it's, they can have a 5G walkie-talkie, but they can't figure out a microphone. This the top state propaganda. This is the top, yeah. Seriously, you you guys heard how the audio just went really bad? That's not us. That's how they released it. China, we've given you so many chances to tell you. Like, if you're going to try to brag about being better than the rest of the world in technology, sort out your dumbass propaganda video. Yeah, sort out, sort out the microphone. So, <clears throat> anyway, how good is this thing? We can see the positions of the users great. Oh no. We also noticed the dazzling lights in the esports venue. They have complicated. So Dan just I just love this he just disappeared to go do some like lame dance. Yeah, with, he's very ADD. Yeah, on the the like random place. By the way, that robot. We yeah, go, we'll, we'll show we'll you. Show. We'll show I'll you right in a after the segment. Actually, that's not a Chinese robot. Okay, no. just in case you're wondering, you're like, oh, high tech dancing robot. Yeah. Power supply system and a network with a 10 gigabyte bandwidth. Be sure no power fail. And with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I love the stock footage of just random power panels or whatever. This has you know. nothing to do with anything. No. No. You know, like, oh, look, we have we have technology. I'm going to do an episode about how I have plugs in my wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's pretty incredible how electricity managed to end up in my office. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, we got over 10 plugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We have a lot of bandwidth. Get a big it's... screen up with like a map of America. Dude, let's do that next <laughs> like, time. We'll just put on the green screen some garbage. The East Coast is going like this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's us. Yeah, It'll exactly. Say, like, ADV Enterprises. You could actually just go search on YouTube like hacker stock yes, footage yes, and they have yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. We'll do it next time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they are ensuring that there's no power failure. Okay. Any disruption in the network mm. during the games. Okay. Woo! Esports of this year Asian game will be incredible. Great! That is, you've got the vibe of technology. Oh wait, so, oh, he unlocked other technologies. 5G video intercom and power and network systems. So, that's some great, he's, this is going to help with his breakdancing a lot. And that's what he's the channeling. The audience is going to love it, wait a he's minute. He's channeling, yeah, <laughs> he's channeling this. When he does his, like, move. Yeah. 5G, 5G walkie talkie, you know? Yeah, and he's yes. like, he'll do like a walkie talkie. Maybe he'll go like this or something. Yes, yes. You know? Definitely. That's going to help. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yes. Whoa, great. I like other tickets. Incredible. Let's go to the next stop. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Do you know how to play hockey? Actually, not. Okay, here Actually you are. Not. Yeah. Thank this you. is the venue for the Hangzhou Asian Games, hockey games. Wow. Let's play the ball. Field hockey. Yeah. Wow, Dan, look, that is Xiaohu. <laughs> what is this? This is embarrassing. Wow. Yeah, it's Xiaohu very embarrassing. Xiaohu's awesome, though. <laughs>
What? <laughs> All I love is Huggy Dance. <laughs> yeah, but I gotta see what technology did they unlock there? They unlocked it like yeah, what? I didn't see that. Wow! Shahu Tiny Hyla! Hockey goaltender robot dog. That was one of the key <laughs> core. Remember that it was supposed to be core technologies yeah, yeah. of how this is so technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. One of the key core technologies was yeah. hockey goaltender robot dog. Yes, hockey goaltender robot dog. Bro, anyone that would, didn't have a curated shot of a camera right in front of it could whack a ball into that thing so hard it would dude. vaporize. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is this ridiculous like knockoff toy thing. Anyway. You you gotta admit the resemblance. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. resemblance. Look is, the view. Yeah, that's him, the guy from the meme. We Dude, found him. Dude, because I didn't. I haven't seen him since the meme. Right? Yeah, it's definitely him. Look the view. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I just had to show that. So anyway, you know the robot you saw dancing around? Yeah. It's, it's pepper. a pepper robot um, from SoftBank in Japan. In fact, this is. I filmed this in 2016. It came out in like 2014. Yes. Okay. So when you see this like impressive, I'm not, it's not really, but you see Dan doing a break dance with a robot and you're like, wow, China's really awesome. They got yeah. dancing robots. Ooh, ooh la la. It's 10 year old technology it's from Japan. 10 year Japan. old, dude. Yeah, 10 year old. Yeah, we both saw these like 10 years ago in Japan. Yeah. And as you can see, it came out in June, 2014. It's, yeah. a, it's a pepper robot. So that's yeah. not, again. Fascinating. Now the dog goalkeeper. Yeah. As we all know, Boston Dynamics developed this thing called Pains, Spot. Painstaking research. Yeah, for in MIT. many years. In fact, the first iteration of this was released in 2008, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's called Big Dog. Yeah. But we all know that this is Boston Dynamics um, technology. They have made nothing. And all you see is they've made smart turf, which is not a thing. No, that's going to be... They've made nothing. Yeah, no. They've made face, facial scanning technology for the social credit system is what they've made. Mm -hmm. That's That's been around. <laughs> yeah, I know. They just that's, took that's, it and put a different like, it has like The only thing is like they took existing technology and made it nefarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway... I want to see Den's dance. Okay. Let's see. Miranda, is that? Have we completed our checklist? Yes, we that. have got <laughs> yeah. exactly seven digits ticket. Mission accomplished. Thank you, Dan. Oh, thank you for this experience, for this amazing tour. Now I'm going to show you Hangzhou Asian game in my way. around the corner. We come to Hangzhou and unlock various digital technologies applied to games in different areas. The whole city in Hangzhou is no doubt at the forefront of the digital economy in China. You just said nothing. It's all nonsense. I just, um, you know, I, I was looking forward to this. You know, he's gone through this journey to, di to yeah. discover technology. Okay, because it's going to give, what is it, digital technological vibes yes. for his dance. Look the view. He literally only does this a few times yeah. and like a and, and a twirl. Yeah. Is that it? That's what he learned from so his... I am so disappointed. Dan. I thought he's like Dan. a break dancer or something. Yeah. And he does this and twirls. He ran out of shields. Look, look at him. This is all he does. Oh, he did a, he did a that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at, he's teaching everyone how to do this. I love, I, I love Dan. <laughs> Yeah, but seriously, there, he just did that again. That's all he can it's do. The the Asian games around. These little kids got it like yeah, switched no, they, on. the backup dancers that they got are incredible in comparison. Yeah, he's just <laughs> literally twirling around and doing this with his hands every once in a while, like something you, like always, that. They always have to put the foreigners in the front. It's unfair. The, it's completely unfair. Put these kids in the front. They're it's impressive. The Asian games. Maybe show your own people. Yes, maybe show Asians. Yeah, well, he could. He be could be Asian. Asian. Yeah. Could he be? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, he could probably be Asian. In Russia. Yeah, but they're not... Russia's Russia. Asia. Yeah, but it's still part of, like, the European Cup and stuff. It's, most of Russia's in Asia, bro. I know it yeah. is. I know it is. It's, that's one of those hard-to-define yeah, yeah, places. Yeah, for sure. In the yeah. corner, we come to Hangzhou and unlock various digital He's dancing yeah. around with a 10-year-old Japanese yeah. robot in China. Area. I mean, I'm not blaming him for any of this, though. They picked yeah. him. Of course. You I'm know. just like... 
I was looking forward to an impressive display of technological vibe dance. Me too. I and thought he was going to learn from his thing. worse tickets. than like some kid in the 80s doing the robot. Right. You know, yeah. that's actually entertaining. Yes. And that's technological. That's How city yeah. Hangzhou yeah. yeah. is no doubt at the forefront of the digital economy. Wait. So Hangzhou is at the forefront of the digital economy. Now, when did this economy come into it all of a sudden? I guess I got to use buzzwords. Dude. It's digital, like take money from it's the government subsidy. Yeah, you it's know? everything that they're trying to push. We have an economy based on fake digital nonsense. <laughs> That's their digital economy, right? <laughs> we love corruption. Yeah, exactly. China. Good luck to Hangzhou and good luck to... I mean, you could, if you were like somebody that had to, mm -hmm. that was working for the government to make sure it's like funds weren't being squandered, which... To be fair in China, I mean, everyone's on the take in some way. Mm -hmm. But like you could analyze this video alone and find just probably tens of millions of dollars wasted yeah. with complete fakery. You know, you know those pepper robots are less than five grand to buy. Yeah, but the budget was probably like they're like we got insane. robotics here, so like yeah, millions we had to of dollars. in the house like develop them. And they or bought something. one of them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and they bought a couple of ro robot toys like that dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that type or of thing. The whole track in, in uh, infrastructure, all that stuff was. There was definitely shortcuts. Of course, of course. Atlantic and friends from all the world. By the way, Miranda, what did you get a ticket for? I hope I can get one. Seven digital tickets are for the lucky followers of Show Me China from seven continents. Of course, you are one of them. Nice followers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to end. Nice followers. Yes, yeah, fantastic. I love. Yeah. That that was such a good segment, and yeah. I, I really want to say thanks to Show Me China for always giving us gold. Yeah, yeah, we love the fact that the Chinese propaganda is always so piss poor. Yeah, and they that spend so much fun. money yeah. on it. Like, Obviously. think of how much money, dude. Do you know how many people watch this? What I would love to just tell what, like you guys the actual that actual propaganda that was yeah. put out. Yeah, let's find out what its uh, view count is. This got <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. Let me pull it up here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You'll get it. Show me China. I just want to say, because like, think about what do you estimate Global the budget link. for that? So uh, this got yeah right. I know thirteen thousand views. Thirteen thousand in, in a month. Mm. How much? And it's being pushed in ad revenue. Let's just say if it was monetized, which I don't even know if it is. Mm. If it was monetized, maybe on that video you got twenty bucks. Yeah, thirty bucks maybe. Then accounting, like let's not even talk about ad revenue. Let's say you sold, I don't know, two tickets to the Asia Games through sure, that. Sure. Maybe. That's maybe? not what it's for, dude. Yeah, it's propaganda. It's just propaganda. And look, it's got 13K views only because it's boosted yes. by the Chinese government. Yes. And it's like, put it, they pay for ads yes. for it to appear on Twitter or wherever else. Right. You know, and so it gets embedded in some websites yep. and things. It's pathetic, and dude. It's so that people at the top can say, "Oh yeah, good job, you did it," and then the people at the bottom be like, "Oh yeah, we did it." Yeah, <laughs> and we they certainly get the did it. Yeah, you get all the money. <laughs> anyway, that's just a, a nice, interesting look into the uh, I don't know life and times of uh, Chinese propagandists. Yeah, mm. it's weird. Yeah. I, it's kind of funny though. They kept saying 2022. I wonder if they reused it for this year. No, because the, it's, no, it's the Hangzhou 19th. Games. Yeah, yeah, the Hangzhou Games didn't happen in 2022. Why they kept saying that. Right? This is new. They said it like three times. Yeah, it's made a mistake. <sighs> you know why? Because they, they're the same people that did the 2022 Beijing <laughs> Olympics, and it's probably like drilled into their heads. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. Yeah. Mm. Hey, um, should we talk a little bit about mooncakes? Uh, yeah, we can. I thought this. Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we could talk a little bit about mooncakes. So, I thought we guys, had the moon segment. It's Yeah, we will. It's coming up. Zhong Chiu Jie Kuala, everybody, which means yes. mid-autumn day, um, you know. Happy Mid-Autumn Day. Yep. And this is all about the moon. And it's, it's really all about family. Yes. And the idea is, you know, the moon is round and you you eat mooncakes and you look at the moon and like wherever your family is around the world, they can look up at the moon. Yeah. So. And go look at the moon and then you feel like a togetherness. It's really, yes. a, it's all about family. Why are you touching everything? I, I wanted to arrange them in a perfect That's order. gross. Bro, it's I, me and you. I don't want to eat your oh, shush. finger oil. I've eaten each other's <laughs> finger oil. Oh, that sounds right. terrible. I've had your finger oil in my mouth before. No, what? Oh, stop. <laughs> That's disgusting. Anyway, anyway. yeah. Um, so, take the middle ones then. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm going to take a middle one. Uh, We've so, made ones out of uh, 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 cream cheese and yeah. bean paste. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, I hope I didn't get a bean paste one. We'll find no, out. That's a cream. That's a strawberry cream cheese. One. Okay, that's yeah. excellent. So now, normally these things, as you said, have got like a salty duck yolk or something yeah. in it, which is not fantastic. I'll be honest. I'll get a red bean one. Yeah. Um, and we've mm -hmm. molded a design. This one's got like a little little mm. pig dude on it. What does yours got? Some kind of nondescript. Um, got some flowers. Like this purple proud, paste. I'm proud of this one. This one looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. But we've made nice intricate ones, and how did it come out? Very nice. <clears throat> made them for the show. Yeah, so basically what you do is you you get a little mold, and you mix all your ingredients together, and you, like, press it into We're not nice talking shapes. about, like, the fungal mold. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would be a terrible movie. The kit. red bean one's really good. Mm. Uh, red bean's one of those things that, like, you think it's going to be chocolate when you're in China, and you get disappointed every time because it's actually just sweet red beans mixed yeah. up together. But actually, it's grown on me. Yeah, this is really nice though because mm. this is not the traditional. This moon is cake. one. Uh, this could be considered semi-traditional. A, a traditional moon cake. Well, if you ate it, you'll feel like you ate a rock. It's like fifteen hundred calories. Yeah, it literally feels like you just ate a stone. Mm. Very filling. Mm. Good for army rations. Mm. And you know what I mean. Some of them are quite delicious. Nuts and oh, yeah, so the nut, the pork, nuts, there's yeah, pork fat in them. Yeah, yeah, those ones are the nuts mm -hmm. and the pork fat, very nice. Mm. The ones that the egg yolk, not really can recommend those. I want to try one of these. You got to mm -hmm. try one of the um, one of these? bean ones. Mm -hmm. The beans are great. I specifically didn't. I made them very, very sweet because I don't want them to be like that gritty, right. mm -hmm. made it smooth. Mm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's got the bean. Yeah, red bean, such a treat. Mm. There's actually a beautiful Chinese song called Red Bean. Look it up. Oh, yeah? Very nice song. Mm. Anyway, it's a very nice holiday. Mm. It's all about Chang Er on the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you tell the story. Well, the problem is with that story is that no one knows the real story. Tell your version. Tell a bullet points version. So there's this, like, hero, and he has, like, an elixir for eternal life or mm -hmm. something. This is one of the... And I'm paraphrasing here because it's been, been years. And basically his wife... Chang Er, whatever, is supposed to be looking after it. And then some people come to steal it, and then she eats it. Some people say she'd have portrayed him. Some people say it's not, you know. Anyway, and then she flies to the moon. And so she lives on the moon, and she has a rabbit that mixes elixirs. What is it? Where did, where, what's the place she lives on again? Just remind me. Oh. Come on. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, you know, there's a rabbit on the moon. There's Chang Er, which is this beautiful goddess is on mm -hmm. the moon who's immortal because she ate that... She ate that she potion pretty, or whatever. She? Yeah, she's supposed yeah. to be like really beautiful. And that's part of the story. There, look, there are variations. I, I found it very difficult in China learning about the different holidays because everybody had a different story. I know. I want to keep know? this light though. Mm. You know? uh, I'm not saying it's bad. It's cool. So it'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, look at the song Red Bean. It's really beautiful. Yeah, anyway, the whole the whole Mid-Autumn Festival, like I said, no matter what the backstory is about Chang Er, whether she betrayed him, whether she didn't, whether she's, there's a wood chopper on the moon in some of these um, mm -hmm. versions, you know, there's a woodcutter on the moon. We, You know what's actually a more beautiful song? What? You guys can definitely, after the show, look up Red Bean or Hong Do, mm -hmm. but uh, there's actually a song just about Mid-Autumn Day uh, that I'd like to play for you right now. Oh. Um, I actually think it's perfect. It's a perfect representation of it. Yes, that's right. Um, and I think you guys would really, really enjoy it. Uh, and you, I think you'd come out of it understanding it a lot better. You're um, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and this was put on by a, a really nice guy that I believe does some media for the Chinese government. Yeah, he'll tell it to you straight. Yeah, let's take a look, guys. We've got this massively good Mid Autumn Festival song for you. A bit of a tradition it. here. Yes, one yeah. of the songs I wrote, and it talks about the moon. Okay, great. The moon I want to listen. I need my guitar. Okay. Let me put it wow, on. Wow, you got the guitar here. Guitar. The holiday okay. Wow. So I'm going to sing a song. The moon. It ought to be. Is our friend yes. Fidel Crisco. Yes, Fidel Crisco, yeah. Was he also called like uh, Tanky Santa Claus or something? Something like that. Mm. Fidel Crisco stuck. Stuck, that's yeah. the best. 
Anyway, the, we did a whole thing about mm-hmm. that guy. He used to run a cult or something in, in something. the States. He was part of it, at least. Yeah, yeah, sorry, he was part of a big cult or, or something, some kind of like communist cult. Yeah, or... was it a cult of personality? That's what you got to have one of those first. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. <laughs> cult of saturated fat. <laughs> yeah, cult it's, of... A weird, it's this weird communist offshoot where they worship saturated fats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like hydrogenated oils. <laughs> That's it, yeah. So anyway, guys... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, the Mid-Autumn Day Festival thing is fantastic. Um, yeah. It's one of my favorite holidays, uh, Chinese holidays. And it, like I said, it's all about family. Mm-hmm. And if you can, try a mooncake because even if you get a bad one, it's definitely worth trying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta, no, there's some great mooncakes. I, I think I made some nice ones. No, those are great. Yeah. Uh, you know what I, what I really like are the sort of snowy... Ice cream ones from Hong Kong. Yeah, those, those are, are really great. nice. Those too. are my favorite. Good interpretation. Yeah. Probably be able to find a bunch of different kinds if you go to an Asian supermarket. Yeah. Even if it's like a Korean or a, uh, yeah, a Vietnamese still, or whatever. Yeah, they still find they'll them. still find yeah. stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, by the way, it's time for us to you have another shout out. Sorry, one second. Follow it. Follow it. Probably not from that. Yeah. You're going to have a little <laughs> shout out uh, to another one of our sponsors. Yes. Can and, you please uh, come look the view? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, like you've had a hard day's work, like this poor guy over here, you got to get home. The last thing you want to do is cook a meal. Am I right? This is the last thing. And you don't want to go eat a disgusting burger that's actually two donuts with uh, (laughs) chicken in the middle. Definitely don't want to do that. (laughs) Because, you know, it's tempting. It's tempting. It's really bad for your health. You know what I really want right now? You're part of Fidel's Crisco's cult. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I could really go for two whole ass donuts mm-hmm. with a piece of fried chicken in between it. That's right. Yeah, that's what I want. So anyway, uh, you don't want <laughs> you don't want that. You, you don't. want you want factor. You do. Okay. And I gotta before you you say anything, I sure. gotta say, um, I was so skeptical mm. about this, mm. but when I actually tried it, I was like, this is actually good. And it's something we use now. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that's nice about it is, you know, like if you're what like, is it first? Well, it's food. It's a meal. It's food. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you know when you want to like prepare food or you're trying yeah. to decide what to have for dinner, mm-hmm. it's tough, it right? Is. You're like, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? What am I going to make for dinner? Well, imagine you just had like a random, you know, selection of really nice food. Then you can try a different one every day. Yeah. You know Amazing. what I mean? So you're not stuck in a routine where you're eating that same donut burger every day no you're not frying up some mac and cheese or something you're yes. actually like hey you know what i got something cool to try something yes. like chef made yes it's really nice anyway. so factor is a uh, it's a meal subscription mm-hmm. and you know what's fantastic about it is it's never frozen this yeah. is chef prepared stuff this yeah. isn't like you go to your freezer That's actually aisle. i filmed it yes. i filmed that i ate it you know like when you go to a fast food restaurant mm-hmm. or you go to like a, you see an ad yes. and they show you some yes. beautiful thing and it's actually in real life, it's crap. Yes. Well, this stuff in real life is good it's looking and it's really delicious. It's really tasty. Seriously. It's really good, yeah. Now you might be busy with the school season, the mm-hmm. fall and all the things that come with it. So why not make your life a little easier? Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. It can help you fuel up fast and it's chef prepared. It's dietitian approved. And it's ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll mm-hmm. save time. You're going to eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Yep. And guess what? It only takes two minutes to heat up and enjoy. Yep. Super, super, super easy. There's no excuse not to eat nice and healthy food. Sure. There's no excuse to eat preservative full crap food. This mm-hmm. is good stuff. High yep. quality stuff. We loved it. Very, very tasty. It comes mm-hmm. with all different kinds of plans. Uh, you need an extra boost for your wellness goals. They got health conscious ones like uh, calorie conscious ones. They got gourmet plus options, which are like... Perfect, prepared to perfection, chef ready stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, ingredients like broccolini, leeks, and truffle butter and asparagus. This is real restaurant stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all kinds of snack packs and stuff. There's tons of options. I highly recommend you go check it out. Yeah. Uh, I think you should go to factormeals.com slash ADV50 mm-hmm. and use the code ADV50 because you're going to get 50% off. This is not like a little bargain here. Yeah, it's you're gonna good. You're going to get 50% off. That's code ADV50 at factormeals.com slash ADV50 to get 50% off. Yeah, don't forget to use that code ADV50. You know, a, a subscriber, actually not a subscriber, a friend of mine. He was a subscriber but until we became very good friends. Um, after the last time we, you know, ran that sponsor, yeah. uh, he was like, I've been using them for like a year and he yeah. loves it. He was like, you know, yeah. he reached out to actually tell me how much oh, he People have it. reached out to tell us how much they loved it after they signed up. It's fantastic. It's really good. Yeah. And it's a great deal. Yeah, so right. can recommend, and it is tasty, and it is nice. Yeah. Um, so what do we got going on here? This still isn't soft power hour yet. Still, we can pop new. this in soft power if you want. 
I I think we can. Okay. Let's just okay. Okay, we're going over to soft power, guys. It's the main segment of the show. The panda stuff's coming, I promise. It's coming. It, I promise. We just had to get the fun stuff yeah, yeah. It's, out of the it's way. It's a holiday after all. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Just chilling out. We're eating n- nice finger oil mooncakes yes. over here. Finger oil. Yeah. Show yo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, anyway. So, so the yo. This is a very disturbing trend, what you're seeing over here. But it's something that's been going on for years in China. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, we're going to show you what is happening, and then we'll explain it. Okay. So you got some people here worshiping something. Okay. Is it the Lord? <laughs> they're bowing they, down and praying. They're bowing down to my delicious mooncakes. And is that what they're doing? They're bowing and praying, like cow towing. They're like, oh, this worshiping. You wonder. I mean, could you take a guess? I think. What do you think? That, I mean, like, what deity do you think they're they're literally getting down on their hands and knees and, and bowing to? I think this is the Tao. You the know, way. This is the way. This mm-hmm. is their bowing to Taoist gods. Mm-hmm. And God, Taoist figures. Yeah. What do you think? The Dao Dao. The, yeah. big, the big way, you know, the big road. Yeah, this... A this Taoist... is a vanilla custard one, by the way. Oh, nice. I'll try one later if you didn't oil it up. I didn't. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. What could it be that they're all praying to? All the lyrics mm. kind of gave it away. Wait for it. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Mao Zedong <Jushi laughs> himself. Yes, they are praying to Mao the Dong. <laughs> 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 we Sorry, call him yeah. Mao the Dong. We could call him Mao the Dong. Yeah. <laughs> Mao anyway, Mao the Dong. The the mass murderer who wiped out. <laughs> you know, we were having this conversation. Why would? Because we noticed this Mao worship in China. You know, like a taxi driver will have it in his car. Mm-hmm. People have him on his on the wall, and like we're thinking, why would people worship a man who brought about so much destruction, destroyed Chinese culture? He did. It was just a little mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he actually went out and tore down mm-hmm. temples, burnt manuscripts, like he hated China. statues, broke them. He hated China. Yeah, he, he wanted ha- to be the yeah. Soviet Union. Yeah, he wanted to get rid of all... Why would you worship someone like that? And then it, it clicked. The people, the good people that stood up against him, the people that wanted to preserve Chinese culture, the people that had you know sophistication and stuff were actually murdered by him and sent out to the fields, to gulags, basically. And the people that survived were the people that benefited from his um, horrible policies. Or the people that kept their head down. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess if you did benefit from his terrible policies and everyone else died around you, but you survived, Mm -hmm. you're probably like, yeah. You know who wasn't like that? What? It's a a young man that led the way in the new thought of Mao. Which one? Oh, yes. There's this young man who really, really knew what he was doing. (laughs) You are too much longer. Just to remind you guys, that yeah. is a third grader that slapped a statue of Mao as a joke and then got arrested. And well, then the police took pictures of him kneeling down with handcuffs. On. Yeah, with the Mao statue, with the next, Mao to statue next to him. I mean, now you can understand why. Okay. <clears throat> this is not an isolated incident. Did you put in the second clip? Um, because I've got the that other clip of them. Oh, no, you didn't. But there's another clip of the villagers doing the same thing, but it's a really like deformed... Oh, that, yeah, yeah. We can save it. Yeah, we'll save we'll it for next time. Yeah, We got to get on to pandas, dude. Oh, we got to get on to we pandas. We got to. Can we just listen to the moon song sure, one sure. more time? One more time for the moon, moon cake. Festival. You the moon. We'll stay in the shot oh, this hey, time great. around. Just the moon song. I want to listen. I need my guitar. Okay. Most talented Let communist guitarist. Oh, wow, you got the guitar here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember he was disappointed that China wasn't as communist as he wanted it to be. He literally said that in the media. The moon. Classic. Mm-hmm. Come on. My favorite part. Yeah, I like that part. It's a good riff. Yeah, dude. There he goes. <laughs> Some sort of Come on. Yeah. Anyway, the moon. That's our yearly tradition. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. let's talk about China's evil panda diplomacy. So... You guys might wonder what panda diplomacy is. And to put it simply, China loans pandas out to countries around the world. Like, 
they'll say, okay, here, Australia, I'm just choosing Australia as a random, you know, country. You can have two pandas for your zoo for 10 years. It costs a lot of money. I think it costs like a million dollars per panda you have to pay China to have it for that time. You can have this, you know, as long as you kind of play along with what we have to do. And it's used to like soften up like political spats and things like they want to start trading with a specific country. Mm. You'll see pandas appear in the zoo. And it's kind of like, a, hey, if you step on our toes, we're taking our pandas back, you yeah. know, or you want pandas, you better pander to our demands. You know, it's that kind of thing. So panda diplomacy really is that using pandas Pander to, diplomacy. yeah, exactly. It's using pandas to, um, you know, for political gain as it goes along. Now, just yesterday, the spokesperson, the foreign ministry spokesperson said, and this is kind of telling. The U.S. is one of the first countries to cooperate with China on panda conservation and research. Together, we've bred 17 cute panda cubs. Seven of them still live in the U.S., connecting the hearts of Chinese and Americans. Now, this is a very nice tweet. Mm. And this is not normal for the Chinese state. Mm, not um, recently. No, because we all know the, the wolf warrior mm. tactics. They're always saying some shit about America, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And this sounds too good. Yeah. And that's because it's panda diplomacy once again. Yeah. Okay. Now, usually the pandas come out when there's something bad that they want to hide or there's something bad that they want to walk back. So when I first saw this, my initial response to this is, that China knows it's probably pushed the boundaries a little bit too far and pissed off America just a little too much. So they're bringing this in to, to kind of soften that. You know what I mean? To just be like, oh, we should cooperate. We're actually good friends. You know that type of thing? Mm. And so I did reply to her and say, the pandas only come out when you know you've uh, crossed the line and are desperately trying to repair relationships or get away with something. Panda diplomacy is real. It is. Anyway, just to give you some basic examples of panda diplomacy, you know, China Xi turns to panda diplomacy to seek EU trade deal. You know what I mean? He'll <laughs> President Xi Jinping, dictator Xi Jinping, will use two pandas to break the ice and soften European opposition to a free trade deal with China during his visit to Belgium. You know, that was years ago. Um, they, there we go. Just again, all this nonsense about the pandas. Remember they. Whenever there's a spat, they snatch their pandas back. You know mm. what I mean? Um, they've used it in Taiwan to try and like sway people. And then, of course, we had the panda balloon nonsense. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that there was a, um, a Chinese spy balloon that flew over America. Yeah. You might remember that. I do. Okay. Yeah. So this Chinese spy balloon flew over America and there was a big hoo-ha about it. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened at the exact same time that that big hoo-ha about the balloon was happening? Pandas? Yes, China made a big stink about a panda and like it was a huge outrage that there was mm. this sick panda that was being mistreated in, in America. In Memphis, right? Yeah, the Memphis Zoo has been mistreating this panda and it looks sick and it's patchy and all that. Mm. And guess what? Like America's bad, treats our panda so bad and mm. got the whole national... And we, <clears throat> need, we want our panda back. Happened at that exact time. And it's not a coincidence that it happened at that time. Yeah. Okay, it's because of the balloon stuff. Panda diplomacy comes into play whenever there's something big going on, right? Anyway, there's a little clip of a CNN thing that we wanted to show you here to remind you all of that whole thing in case you didn't even know about it, okay? So let's take a look. Once a symbol of Beijing's goodwill, now the center of angry debate in China. This panda in Memphis, Tennessee has become the latest victim in worsening US-China tensions. Yaya arrived in America with her playmate Lila two decades ago as an emblem of growing bilateral friendship. But recent videos showing the once fluffy panda now looking skinny with scraggly fur has sparked outrage in China. Many Chinese people and some animal advocates accusing the zoo of mistreatment. Videos on Chinese social media claiming the pandas are being abused quickly went viral against the backdrop of growing anti-American sentiment. The rumors often fanned by state propaganda. Yeah, so um, one thing, the zoos here, when they've got a panda, they set up panda cams that you can see that's all over. Um, if you want to go look at the, the pandas, you can mm. watch them 24-7. They're not hiding anything, by the way. No. There's no abuse of these animals. Mm. So, of course, the netizens will go and scrub mm. through the um, the panda cams at 24-7 to try and, like, 
say that something bad's been happening, but nothing bad was happening. It was an old ass panda and had a genetic problem, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, pandas live to about 30. And these pandas. No, it's their... under 30. Under 30. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So these pandas are in their like mid 20s. So mm -hmm. reaching the end of life, basically, anyway. But not, not to try and make excuses, but yeah. see what happened at the exact same time. Okay. This okay. is kind of important. And meanwhile, Chinese social media users are praising these viral videos of this panda in Russia, Wu Yi, claiming videos of the active and playful panda prove Russia is taking excellent care of the Chinese bear. State TV saying the pandas are helping the Russia-China relationship. Chinese and American scientists launched a joint investigation concluding that Yaya has a genetic fur and skin condition that does not impact her quality of life and has received excellent care. So you see, there's the crux of the matter. Yeah. Chinese and American scientists together are like, let's check out this panda and make sure nothing's wrong. And they found out it's a genetic disease and that it's receiving excellent care. So it's not it's American fine. scientists, mm -hmm. it's Chinese mm -hmm. and American scientists get together. But yeah. that didn't, of course, the Chinese state media is not mm -hmm. going to be like, oh, it's actually okay. They fan the flames of this bullshit. Yeah. Say, look how great these young Russian pandas are doing, you know, compared to this genetic disease one. Yeah. Meanwhile, so the Chinese scientists go, yes, it's fine. Yes. And then the propaganda, the, literally the Chinese government goes, no, it's not. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and so they fan these flames of this anti-American pro-Russia <sighs> all at the same time that this spy balloon <clears throat> hoo-ha was yes. going on, right? Anyway, let's continue a bit. But that message is not getting through. Outside the panda exhibit at the Beijing Zoo, I asked people if they've heard of Yaya the panda. This man says, yes, she's abused in America. An 11-year-old boy tells me, I heard the U.S. is treating the panda poorly. This man says, isn't Russia taking good care of pandas? Pandas are happy over there, not like in the U.S. <laughs> and this man with his granddaughter tells me, Pandas in Russia are very happy. Why? Russians and Chinese are friends. At least Russia is not sanctioning China. So, I mean, again, isn't that just a bunch of nonsense? Mm. You see how the propaganda works. <clears throat> it's, it's very clear. In the face of actual facts, the facts don't matter because the Chinese government propaganda is very effective at riling up the people to believe one thing or the other. Mm. Okay, and you can see the results of a... Of a, Settle a little in interview this there. Beijing Zoo. Now China has long used its pandas as a diplomatic tool. Currently, its pandas are on loan to about 20 countries. The United States has not received one since Yaya and Lola 20 years ago. Now these pandas are normally loaned on these 10-year leases, and they cost a million dollars annually. The Memphis Zoo had already planned to send Yaya and Lola back to Beijing this spring because their lease is expiring. But Lola died of heart disease two months ago at the age of 24. The average lifespan for pandas is usually under 30 years. Yet that didn't stop rampant speculation and led to an explosion of accusations about Yaya's treatment too. Yeah, I remember this at the time because all the shills were going crazy about this. Like, bring Yaya home, being abused in America, all this kind and of stuff. And then showing Z Panda being like, <laughs> yeah, rolling exactly. around this young little cub, you know? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Accelerating calls to bring Yaya back to China. The message Zanda. even featured on Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, paid for it to be put up in Times Square and everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonder what they're covering up. Yep. Ports from New York City to major cities across China. In 1972, during U.S. Anyway, that's all whatever. Yeah, we, we don't need the history of all this garbage. Anyway, now China, <laughs> China's wanting to take its pandas back. Okay. So you've got a list of countries where China's currently trying to, well, basically saying we're taking them back. Well, this goes against what the, that tweet you showed. Yeah. There must have been a quick change of thought because quick change of heart because China is not is using panda diplomacy against the other countries now. Yeah. US. So yeah. So what? Tell tell us currently. What? what? Japan, Finland, yeah. UK, Netherlands, and the USA. Those are the countries where China's like, okay, we're taking our pandas back. Yes. Now remember, they have like a ten-year lease. Yeah. Usually, which this whole panda thing is a little bit bizarre to me because, you know, when they're, for instance, being looked after in uh, American mm. zoos and they have a baby, okay, that baby still belongs to China. Yep. And you have to pay China a million dollars a year or whatever. They for really the privilege got a good deal of, with this. You have a, the privilege of having a panda. And I get it, it's a big attraction. So we get a panda. But um, 
the, them taking it back, this is a quote from a, a, a Chi Meng Tan, who's an associate professor at the University of Nottingham in Malaysia. He mm -hmm. said, this is perhaps Beijing's way of signaling to the West that they may not be very happy with how things are going. Okay. He's, this guy studies panda diplomacy. Yeah. Um, let's see what else he said over here. <clears throat> Another little quote from him whenever it wants to pop up here at some point. Beijing has grown increasingly frustrated with how relations between China and the West have deteriorated in recent years, Tan said. This may be one way of telling people that. You're not treating us very well, so maybe we'll pull out our pandas. Yeah. So, I mean, that's you get the gist of this whole thing, this panda diplomacy. But just in case you guys think that, like, the only pandas in America are scrawny, <laughs> genetically diseased, you know. Because that's what propaganda would like you to believe. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Which, you know, don't forget that panda's been in America for like two decades or yeah. whatever, and it's been very healthy. It just obviously developed this disease, yes. whatever, this genetic, genetic thing. Disease, yeah. Which is confirmed by Chinese scientists, yes. by the way. It's not an excuse. I love misinformation. They are yeah. sponsored. Here's, here's another uh, little sort of clip. Among the biggest stars in the nation's capital. Look at those. Yeah, those are not like scrawny pandas. No. Pandas in America those also look kids. healthy like Russian ones. Yeah, yeah, those are kids. <laughs> and their time in Washington is coming to an end. I want them to stay. Tian Tian and Mei Shang are giant pandas who call the Smithsonian National Zoo home. Tian Tian celebrated his 26th birthday on Sunday. Wow. He looks yeah, really he's nice. real old. Yeah. The rare giant pandas are coming to America. Giant. They came to Washington, D.C. in 2000 as part of a conservation and breeding partnership with China. Shit, the original back. agreement yeah. was for 10 years, but was extended several times. During that more than two decade run, the duo gave birth to a son, Shuao Qi Ji, whose arrival oh, was documented guy, with a live panda cam that drew in Chinese millions if you're of viewers. Pronounce it. The yeah. panda cam's round the clock feed has caught the pandas climbing trees, fighting over food, playing in the water, and of course, sliding down a snow covered hill. But yeah, anyway, China would never show you those clips. No, no, they'll only show you this the diseased, scrawny, yeah. you know, one and say America abuses and kills pandas or something. But again, this panda diplomacy thing is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I do want to cap it off with something. Yeah. What's that? And something that you can use as your own litmus test. Mm -hmm. When China is trying to cover something up, mm -hmm. they will post about pandas on social media. Yes. And we've seen this many, many times, usually about pandas in, in China. And if there's something bad happening domestically... Mm -hmm. They will post that stuff so that people will look away from whatever problem is happening. Yeah. It's a weird diversion tactic. It is. If you yeah. look at, you know, good old Zhang Heqing, just <laughs> yeah. bringing this up, I suppose, over here, you know. He's, this he, is Wuma Corner. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's, we'll pop into Wuma Corner and kind of segue into yeah. it. Okay. Wuma Corner where we talk about the haters. But Zhang Heqing, uh, we should all know Zhang Heqing by now, by the way. If you're part of the show, uh, you'll recognize this. <laughs> <laughs> he posts a lot of fake shit. Yeah, he's always posting like absolute nonsense. But I went to go look at his feed um, today because I was just looking for panda stuff. If you search uh, at Zhang He Ching underscore He Ching panda, yeah. you literally have hundreds of yeah. panda stuff. Yeah. Because every time, like you say, there's mm. something bad going on in China, it's like, look at this cute panda. This cute panda is hanging on the tree. This panda is doing kung fu. Oh, look, this panda is rolling. You know what I mean? We made rightful criticism mm -hmm. um, I, on his account, uh, under his post. He keeps posting fake things, right? And it, it, we think it's immoral to be posting fake images and videos of lakes and trains trying to yeah, to, yeah. Trying to make people think there's no genocide in Western China. Yeah, it's like, China. this is Xinjiang, and he shows like a, a faked fake, AI Swiss Alps. Yeah, Swiss Alps of <laughs> yeah. AI. Anyway, mm. so we, we rightfully criticized and be like, why are you showing this fake stuff? Anyway, he blocked me. He blocked. Um, he didn't block me though. He didn't block you. He followed me. I said something. Then he blocked me. Oh, what a dumbass! Uh, Hua Chunying blocked did not me. block me, but blocked you. Yes. So it's Very like interesting. Hmm. It's an, it we're is, two. We're two for two here. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, with Chinese officials. Mm -hmm. What else you got for us in Wuma so Corner? Oh, this is okay. This is very simple. Yeah, we're gonna give you a cliff notes version. We are running out of time. This is going yeah. very yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. But basically, there was a uh, university in Germany, mm -hmm. and they study quantum uh, quantum computing. It's like the oldest university in Germany. Yeah, it's like nuts, right? They yeah. do tons and tons of research for quantum computing. Yeah, this Chinese guy comes in. He's like a really talented quantum computing guy, right? Mm -hmm. Gets the studies, brings over a lot of students and stuff. And then goes back to China with yeah. said research. So, well, he he went into um, the... What is that bloody university called? Uh, 
Yeah. Find it. Yeah, find yeah, it. I'll it's, find it. Yeah. You'll, I know the name. You I know, know so the name. Do I. It's like what Germany's oldest university. Yeah, no, no, It'll no, come it's out just quantum. Some, with an H or something. <laughs> you know. Heidelberg, I think. I believe it's Heidelberg. Let's get it right. Let's see. Anyway, um, he comes in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Heidelberg, yes. Is it Heidelberg right, yeah. University? Okay, anyway. Goes to Heidelberg University, and then he applies for grants. Yeah. He gets an initial 5 million... Um, Euros. Yeah, is it Euro or I dollar, believe. whatever, grant right. from yeah. from the EU and Germany. Sure. Okay. So he gets paid by the EU, and he gets paid by Germany to do this research in Germany. Yeah. With, of course, all of... The, he has access to all of their, you know, facilities, all yeah. of the other scientists there, yeah. the other all the interns, everything, to do this research, okay? So he's not necessarily doing this research himself. He's actually just using Germany to research this stuff. Yes. He applies for many grants. He gets all of them. Yep. Okay? And he keeps using this money to develop this quantum technology. But he keeps going back and forth to China. He goes to China. He brings his students, because, of course, he's got his own, like... It's thing not going the oldest on there. university in, China, in What's Germany, that? by the way. Just not, to, no, just to correct. It's not a what? It's not the oldest university in G- Germany. Oh, it's not the oldest? No. no. What is the oldest Munich, one? Munich, I believe. What's the oldest one called? Munich. The Munich University? Okay, one of the oldest, sorry. Yes. Yeah. You know, my... Just want to be correct. Maybe yeah. it's like the oldest in East Germany or West matter. Germany. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, the thing is, he brings his students from China, fresh off the boat, into Germany. They yes. all apply for grants. Yes. They all get grant money from the EU and from Germany. So. Yes. This is government money paying these Chinese like, students that have just come over, and they basically get trained in Germany yes. using German money and European Union money to build this quantum technology. And of course, yes. this is everybody is involved here. German professors are involved here, German interns, all the students, everything's involved. Then in 2008, he takes all of those students that he bought over that got grants, all of the lab equipment that was developed, mm-hmm. all of the research and everything, and then he just goes back to China with it. He takes all, everything back. So all the stuff that was paid for by the European Union and paid for by um, Germany, etc., yes. he takes back, and then it gets used yeah. to develop quantum communications to prevent people from seeing what's going on in Xinjiang. Yes. And it gets used. Does, yeah. yeah, his com- a company that he started does it. It's used for the Chinese military satellites that have got mm. quantum communication. Mm. It gets used for military purposes. And so, the long story short of all of this is that Germany and the European Union funded Chinese military quantum entanglement communications and technology. Guess what? I use quantum computing to find out that Heidelberg University is Germany's oldest university. Oh, it is. I was looking at the chat. People were arguing about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I fact-checked you, and you were yeah. right. Okay, good. Quantum so, computing. You know? Yeah, quantum computing. Anyway, so there's this question that came up. There's, yeah, we just thought this documentary is yeah. actually really good, there's a and link. I linked it in mm-hmm. the description, but they posed a question that I think will just be so self-evident yeah. when it's being posited. Yeah, let's listen to this question. The question is... Should German universities collaborate with quantum scientists who are accountable to an authoritarian state? <laughs> it's very no. simple. Isn't yeah, it? the answer is no. <laughs> Just no. Anyway, go go watch the little documentary when yes. you've got time yes. because it's very eye-opening. Yes. Uh, we want to shout out Jordan Harbinger, a friend of the show. He has a f- fantastic podcast where he has amazing guests on. We've been a yep. few times. Yeah, great guy. Uh, episode 903 just dropped yesterday, and it mm-hmm. was really, really good because it was about why do people fall for misinformation? Mm. And I think in this day and age, it's very important to understand why that is. And the, the guest is actually really cool, Dan uh, Ariely. What he said is that it's kind of important that you don't pick a side like right or left or whatever. What? No, they're more responsible for falling for this or that. You mm-hmm. have to understand why each side is falling for misinformation because yeah. then people can actually figure out, wow, that's not true, mm-hmm. right? What things about our personality does this appeal to, right? Yeah. Why are we listening to this kind of stuff and why are we more biased to listen to, sort, to, listen to sort, uh, different sorts of things? And really what you can do is use your own kind of mind to think about how does Russia and China take advantage of this? Because that's currently what we're dealing that's with what's right happening now. now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I highly recommend you go over to Jordan, jordanharbinger.com slash 903 if you want to hear that episode. Or go to his YouTube channel and subscribe and say the China Show sent, sent me. you. Mm. That'd be great. Yeah, he's a great uh, host. Yeah. Very, very good. And it's hard to find a good host for a podcast. It's yeah. not just sitting there talking. Yeah. You know, actually yeah. asks questions and then listens. Yeah, he's a great host. Yeah, he's a great host. Yeah. Um, we've both been on a show and, you know, we've, we've been interviewed 
quite a few times by mm -hmm. different people, and he's a very good interviewer. Yes, the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best we've had. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So is that it, or is there something? Because what, what about... There is something else. That was supposed this to be Worldview, world view, by the this way. This is Worldview. Okay. Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically no, that with was regards actually to China. To be, that was supposed to be what Mount Corner did. Well, oh, that was? Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. Worldview now. Yes. Okay, Worldview, what do we got? So this is actually pretty interesting, and most people are not paying attention to this. And I'm not okay. being one of those guys that says, oh, no one's talking about it, because mm -hmm. people are. There's articles, thus the Economist article exactly, that I linked yeah. below. Yeah. But... I think less people are paying attention to this because mm -hmm. it's not in English. Ah. This article is. Um, China is basically flooding Taiwan with misinformation for the political campaigns, right? right? And why is that? Well, Taiwan is an elected democracy, right? You go there, you have full democratic rights, people take politics very seriously, and you mm -hmm. vote for your local leadership and the central leadership yeah. in Taiwan. It's a free-ass country. I think it's like 93 out of 100 on the Freedom Index for the world. Yeah. It's higher than America. Yeah. Uh, China's a nine, by the way. Imagine going home with a report card to your mom, and you're like, hey, mom, I got a nine. She's like, wow, out of 10? You're like, no, out of 100. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, China mm -hmm. is has so much power to be able to flood Taiwan with this info mm -hmm. and this info. Yeah. And what they've done is they... Uh, you know, they used to do it by blaring a loudspeaker across. Yeah. Like yeah. a massive Taiwan loudspeaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they blare like propaganda, and they'd send balloons with leaflets and yeah. stuff. Blair Witch. Now they just use the internet. Yeah, so... Um, What's crazy is that they're using newspapers, they're using internet, they're using forums, they're using social media, they're using targeted ad campaigns. Uh -huh. and what they're doing is not necessarily, this. Not, it used to be way less sophisticated, but yeah. they're kind of learning from Russia. Yes. And that you got to kind of appeal to people what they what they think they care about, right? Yeah. So in, the, in this campaign, what they found is that China is spreading information that America is developing some sort of biological weapon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll quote this. Um, within weeks, the uh, the rumor evolved into a wilder claim. Taiwan was going to collect 150,000 samples of Taiwanese blood and hand it over to the Americans so that they could develop a virus to kill Chinese people. What? So remember, China had that whole bioweapons thing about like how we can use DNA, us, the PLA. And they actually connect, collected all of yeah. America's DNA yes. through pregnancy tests and stuff without anyone knowing. And they wrote a mm. book. The People's Liberation Army in China wrote a yeah. book about how to use how they could potentially use DNA to mm -hmm. do targeted weapons at people of different races. Yep. I did a whole vi I did a whole video expose, found yeah. documents, yeah, and I translated them. Anyway, they took that mm -hmm. and then flipped it and said, "America's doing America's going to do it, yeah. and they're going to do that to you." So the whole th claim here is not necessarily that you should vote for a specific person like they used to. Very rudimentary propaganda. Yeah, this disinfo campaign that China's sending into Taiwan is that you need to understand that America doesn't have your best interests in mind. And even if you are you know, more aligned with democratic values and stuff, America is going to use you yeah. to get back at China or do whatever. And you're in more danger because of America than China. So basically ever. vote for the, the person who wants to reunite or unite with uh, China. Without saying that, right? Yeah. It's to get people to be concerned about the America threat mm. of things, not the China threat of things. I gotcha. And it's actually really, really dangerous because you understand if Taiwan is mm -hmm. affected by such a large campaign like this, like we've seen in the US, right? If they're affected by something like this, then China could potentially take Taiwan without any shots fired. Yeah, yeah. And that would pose a significant security threat in the East, as well as a lot of Taiwanese people that would be like, holy shit, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. This is a free country with a lot of dissidents, yeah. with a lot of people that really, really speak out against the CCP. And the CCP has said, that they are keeping lists of everyone yeah. that when they invade, that they know who said what. Yes, right? exactly. So this is like a whole way to wash this away. Mm -hmm. And the, the article goes into great depth. I would love for you guys to check it out. Um, not a sponsor, just down below if you want to check yeah. it out. It's called China's Flooding Taiwan with Disinformation. Excellent. It's a good one. So what's up with the China Construction Bank? So we got some inside info, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll see with who. Yeah. Um, but there is something up with the banks in China. This is one of those things that I haven't seen any news about because this is a personal anecdote. Mm -hmm. But this person did some due diligence and went to go check. Right. Now, he is in an unknown, unnamed place, right, in China. And he could be a Chinese. He could be a Russian. He could be anyone. Yeah, right? you never know. But mm -hmm. what I will say is that he does know a lot of uh, people that are foreigners in China, right? Mm -hmm. And 
what happened is they're having trouble opening any new bank accounts, which is a bit weird, right? Yeah. You'd think you would want people to be opening bank accounts to keep capital flight from happening, right? Sure. You know, start a checking account, keep yeah. your money in China. Mm -hmm. The banks are citing counter fraud measures as the reason that they can't open an account, right? Mm. Uh, they've tried big banks, including the Bank of China, and they're all being told the same thing. This is not some little thing. Mm. And he said, this just blows his mind because China can't even provide the most basic of functions right now, like opening checking accounts. So something's going on to there. To foreigners, right? It's bit, yeah, yeah. it's, it could be to everyone. Could be. It could be to everyone. It's just a, it's a problem right now. There have been a um, lot of issues with banks. And I will quote, I know both a Westerner and a Chinese local. Okay. A Chinese citizen that tried to open the bank account and they could not. Mm, interesting. So this is not just foreigners. Well, look, it's weird because when it comes to the Chinese banks, these mm. different rules seem to just happen without any announcement. Yep. Yep. And it happened to us, like mm -hmm. when you know you used to be able to get US dollars and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you couldn't change your money to US dollars anymore. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell anyone. No. You just go in there and you're like, hey, I'd like to change you know, whatever... Chinese money to you, so it's like, sorry, foreigners yes. can't do that anymore. Yes. You know, that's just like, it's very frustrating. And um, people are starting to really lose, the, like, confidence in the banks there, I got to say. You see all these protests all the time. People can't get their money out. The banks are using stalling tactics to prevent that's people from... Protests, yeah. yeah. They use stalling tactics so that people can't withdraw money. Have you seen people are like on waiting lists to yes. go in to have an appointment to try and draw money and then they can't, you know, things like that. It's getting pretty desperate. It is. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. uh, there's people outside of all these uh, Henan banks that they're not getting their loans. Mm -hmm. uh, people are just losing money left and right. And there's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen with the property collapse because sure. it is underway right now. It's yeah. Zheng Zai collapsing, exactly. the property bubble. Uh, there's another thing I want you guys to check out. There's a really yeah. cool article I found. Okay. Um, and basically, there is a huge wave of fraudulent U.S. trademark filings, uh, which are likely caused by Chinese government payments. You know what's happening? Mm -hmm. They're getting the Chinese government looks looks to be looks to be paying people in China to open up nonsense uh, copyrights, yeah. right? In the U.S., right? Uh, mm -hmm. U.S. trademarks. Yeah. And they're paying them like upwards of like five hundred dollars for each one. Right, yeah. so people are earning salaries in China, opening these nonsense, you know, U.S. I mean, it makes trademarks. sense. It's because then, just like with Huawei, has the most patents or whatever. You just do it, and then you can say we have the most trademarks, it's, the most, you know. It's also <laughs> it looks to be well, at least you know, the experts in this blog or whatever are saying yeah. how it undermines the entire system. Right, and it, you know, anything that you can do. Remember, we talk about dual purpose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that you can do to bolster your state state company and be like, we have the most patents, like you said, yeah. right? Or the most research papers. Remember yeah. those fake research yeah, papers? Fake research. Yeah, well, we have the most We have the most copyrights or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most copyrights. But you also have the situation where how can we chip away at this institutionalized system that's been around for hundreds of years that yeah. the world relies on? How can we cheapen this and ruin it? Not only that, but they can also use it to do yep. like troll, you know, All kinds copyright of claims. All and, kinds of stuff. You know, trademark I shouldn't have said dual purpose. I should have said fine. Of ten purpose. Yes, you know, exactly. Like it's got a lot of purposes. Purpose. Yeah. So it's when very China interesting. when China says dual purpose, they mean the bad purpose, yes. not the good one. You know. Yes. Yeah, the bad purpose. <laughs> the military or the you know whatever yes. version. That's what they're actually talking about. Yes. You know, here's a gun. It's dual purpose. It can be used for defense or it can be used yes. for like assaulting and attacking and invading. That's the purpose we want it for. Yes. You know. Um, so the last thing I wanted to point out here was this excellent uh, State uh, Department that uh, report that just dropped, which yep. is really good. I linked it below. This is the first time I've seen a public, like official acknowledgement of what we've been talking about the entire time. Yep. This is the proof is in the pudding, like it's stamped and approved here, right? Yeah. Um, this is a Global Engagement Center special report and it's how the PRC in China seeks to reshape the global information environment. And I'll quote here, the People's Republic of China spends billions of dollars annually Mm -hmm. on foreign information manipulation efforts. And that's something we've been saying nonstop through things like um, Jiang Hao, Zhong Guo, Gu Shi, yes, tell, exactly. China, tell China story All that well. Xinjiang nonsense with the ghoulies and things and the shills that we constantly Prop talk about. Yeah, propaganda. propaganda. There's, there's stuff in here, right? Even what we showed you today with yeah. that stupid thing about the technology for the Asia it's games. It's aimed at the West, but yeah. The there's segregated games. It's much, 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 much more nefarious than that. Obviously, yeah. we show you the fun stuff to, to poke fun, but yeah. Beijing uses false or biased information to promote positive views of the PRC and the Chinese Communist Party, yeah. the CCP. I'm glad the State Department used the correct <laughs> yeah, terminology. Exactly, That's yeah. nice. Yeah. At the same time, 
The PRC suppresses critical information that contradicts its desired narratives on issues such as Taiwan, mm -hmm. human rights practices, South China Sea, mm -hmm. domestic economy, international economic engagement. And more broadly, the PRC seeks to cultivate and uphold a global incentive structure that encourages foreign governments, and listen to this, elites and journalists <laughs> and civil society to accept its preferred narratives and avoid criticizing its conduct. Yes. And there is a fact sheet on this and there's also the official thing. Highly recommend you go read this because it's finally, we've, it ever, we've been, people like us have been vindicated now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about that dashboard confessional song. <laughs> sure. um, you definitely want to read this because it talks about the overt and covert influence over different content platforms. Yes. And we are definitely at the forefront of this kind of stuff. Like we are talking about well, We've, we've been kind of under attack for years by yeah. this, you know, nonsense. All these like, I don't know, smear campaigns against us and so on. Yes. Yeah. So it also goes into constraints on global freedom of expression, which again, no person on US soil, in my opinion, I can't speak for other countries, but I think that no person mm -hmm. on US soil should have their first amendment ever trampled on by a foreign government sure. that's outlandish and mm -hmm. that is unacceptable it happens though but it, mm -hmm. it cannot it cannot yeah. happen mm -hmm. so at least we have public acknowledgement of you know mm -hmm. the state department which is cool um on issues that deem sensitive the prc is employed online and real world intimidation yes. to silence dissent and encourage self-censorship yep. and that's to anyone talking about this stuff we're not just talking about chinese dissidents anymore. oh yeah anyone that's talking about china they will use methods like cutting off income sources and many things that we could delve into in much deeper oh yeah they've gone date. after our families they've gone after us yes it's it's real because we've lived it yes they yeah. have it in many languages this is a very important report probably one of the most important important reports i've seen come out of the u.s government so yeah. it's really really cool to see some acknowledgement go check it out i have listed all of the our sources today in the description below yep. go read those after the show Excellent. Yeah. So it's time for us to stop hammer time. Yes. <laughs> it's you know, yum cha time, actually. <laughs> All right. So uh, yum cha is our Q&A section, guys. This is where we just talk to you guys, answer your super chats, have a good time, relax. It's Friday after all. I get to loosen the tie. It stays up on the weekend. We cut it out of the show on Monday. But if you go to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts, not only can you see the full show, but you can also join us for Shaban Ho on Mondays. Shaban Ho, we forgot to mention earlier, is our Monday show, which uh, is always a lot of fun. Um, 